Um, yeah, John actually stopped me in the corridor the other day and went, Helen, you've not told me what you're talking about at Teach Me. And I stood there for a minute thinking, I'm sure I signed up as an audience member, but maybe I didn't. <laughs> Clearly. Um, so, yeah, so when, um, when I actually said yes, I would talk, I, I always get a bit nervous on the stage of the microphone because I might start singing, so beware. Um, uh, there was lots of things I thought about talking about and then kind of slept on it a bit and then thought the one thing that I'm really passionate about at the moment is... <laughs> is oh I've got the clicker I've got the clicker <laughs> sorry there we go uh, when is it okay to say gay now this is something that I'm sure most of us have encountered in our schools is that word of gay and the inappropriate use of the word gay and um, having had the privilege of leading the three R's team for the last four years, which is our PSHE package at Great Torrington School, I've done a lot of work with, uh, with my team and the pupils on, um, on discrimination. And this is something, that I know it's not new in schools, but it's something perhaps I'm noticing more because I'm noticing it. Um, so, I was lucky enough last year to go on the Stonewall Train the Trainer event if any of you get the chance, they are free events, I believe, um, but they are very powerful and very empowering to come to have that kind of information under your belt, really. Um, I've taken some statistics, which I'm going to show you now, from their teachers' report 2014. They did a report five years previous, and what they have noticed is there is a positive move uh, forward. Um, so just a few things that we might find interesting. 70% primary schools, I won't read it to you, but that's about um, teachers here, pupils use the expressions like, that's so gay, or you're so gay in school. <coughs> Lots of teachers don't know if they are allowed to teach lesbian, gay or bisexual issues. And this is more concerning, I would suggest, that the percentage of teachers who've heard homophobic language or negative remarks about gay people from another school staff, from other school staff. Um, a little uh, while ago, a few months ago, we had Day of Difference here, which we are able to do each year. It's probably the most powerful day we have every year at this school, in my opinion. Um, and we'd had a slight issue before that day about some uh, inappropriate language between with some of our year eights. So we brought all the year eights in uh, at lunchtime and we had some of our visitors here, and, um, and one of them was a gay man who stood here and said, for the vast majority of my life, for over 30 years of my life, I denied to myself and to my family that I was gay. Because the only, um, the only time I've ever heard that word gay was in a negative way. And I didn't want to put my family at risk. I didn't want to put myself in that arena of admitting I was gay. Um, and that's really sad. Over half his life, he denied the person he really is because of the fear of what other people would say, because of, of the connotations that went with that word. <coughs> However, this is quite promising. Particularly the bit at the bottom, when we know how sometimes our parents might misconstrued what we do at school. But out of all those teachers who have taught uh, or addressed these issues... They've received no complaints from parents for doing so. <coughs> There's video now. And she does it far better than me, believe it or not. eliminating the word gay as a pejorative from our lexicon. Explain to you the difference between what I just said and what this difference conveys. Now you may be saying, Ash, we live in Golden, we love gays here. We have pride, we have BCAP, all true. But I guarantee you there are places you go every day where someone will describe something pejoratively as so gay, despite the fact that it's neither homosexual nor happy. Now why is this important? First of all, it's critical to know that there's a difference between tolerance and acceptance. Tolerance is to put up with, the capacity to endure continued subjection to something. Now, I don't know about you, but that is not exactly something I strive for. <laughs> Acceptance, on the other hand, is to regard as proper, normal, and inevitable, to recognize to be true. 
tolerance is when the school district allows you to bring your same-sex thing to prom. Acceptance <coughs> is when your classmates don't whisper and laugh when you dance. The difference is tremendous. Now, gay is not the first word in our language to need a makeover. All of these words evoke emotion. They're hard to read, hard to say. Your body physically reacts to seeing these words. I have a similar reaction when I hear somebody describe something pejorative as so gay. I was at a gym in Boulder once, and a trainer was teaching us how to spot. And another trainer came up and said, well, you better never grab me like that, dude. That's so gay. And he was just saying it to give his buddy a hard time. But can you hear the homophobia in it? Now, there's plenty of things that it's okay to call gay. Me, for example, the top row, they've all come up. Now, the bottom row, we cross our fingers, but until they do, they're cartoons and muppets, so at the very least, they're happy. Now, there's a long list of things that you should never call so gay. An assignment you don't want to do is not so gay. Someone's new haircut is not so gay. A workout you hate is not so gay. A test that you bomb is not so gay. Someone's car is not so gay. Now again, I may be preaching to the Boulder Gay Loving Choir. Some of you are gay. Even more of you have gay friends. But I chose this topic because you can legislate tolerance. You can't legislate acceptance. That takes a societal shift. So, so you're not sure if you should use the word gay. Here's a flow chart. Is it a person? No. Tough start. We'll get you on the next slide. So it is a person. Is it actually a self-identified homosexual? No. Are you describing their happiness? Really, their happiness? Then you're okay. All right, so it's not a person. It's a place within the living gay culture, like a gay bar or pride or a rainbow flag. Okay, then you're good. If not, gay is not the right word for you. You're using it in a derogatory way. What it often comes down to is not hate or bigotry, but laziness. Gay is a really easy word to throw in, but it's not what you're trying to convey. <coughs> Look at all these other options. Say what you mean and mean what you say because the words that you choose matter. When you use, when you use gay in a pejorative way, the effect that it has on the gay kid in the room or the kid with gay relatives is that being gay is less than or inferior to. And our bar cannot be that a day that you just get through life or just get through school and don't get harassed qualifies as a good day. Now, in Boulder, we're much more like the guy in the right than the guy in the left, without question. In Boulder, it's rarely so overt, but it does happen. So when it does, what do you do? What do you say to the trainer at the gym? Do you just stomp out and quit your membership the next day? Do you muster your best Gary Coleman and just glare? Or do you sit him down afterwards and say, hey, you know what? I know you're just trying to take your buddy, but what you said was hurtful. That part's up to you. You do what you can. We need all hands in on this one. Societal change begins with small steps. When you hear someone describe something pejoratively as so gay, it's an opportunity for connection and conversation not to be missed. And silence is consent. And you know what? We're better than that. We're bolder, damn it. And you all, you are the difference makers. You are parents and teachers and business owners and all in all just freaking awesome people that have more influence than you give yourself credit for. It speaks volumes in our society. That we're more comfortable seeing a picture of two men holding guns than two men holding hands. And the way that we write that is to make sure that the words that we use to describe the letter are never used in a way that is less than or demeaning or inferior to. Now, I'm not perfect, and I'm not trying to get you all to join the gay police. I did this topic because I didn't have an answer for the guy at the gym. I did my best Gary Coleman, but that was about it. But it inspired this, talking to 850 people instead of one. So when you can, say something. Because in the end, it takes a village, people. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't, think, I can't think of a better group of folks to make change happen than the people in this room. Thank you to Ignite for allowing me to speak. And to those of you, and to those of you inspired to be part of the change, I thank you in advance for being the change you wish to see. Um, so I was a little bit nervous about showing that. I said to John, there's the F word in it. And then we're like, Andrew Curran's been here, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, she, she summed it up beautifully. But our challenge as educators is to challenge. If we, if we accept or say nothing, it's accepting it. If we hear that word, we should challenge it. And um, <coughs> one of my year 11s, 
lovely girl in year 11 quite often uses the word gay in the wrong manner. And now, as soon as she says it, she goes, oh, because she knows I'll go, Livia, why did you use that word? Oh, I didn't really mean that word. So why did... And it's about challenging it. And the more we challenge it together, <laughs> the less it will happen. And I actually honestly believe that it's because they don't truly understand the meaning behind the word. And it's about educating them, not just the word gay, but all the other words that we've just seen flag up there. It's about educating them into the real context of that word and actually what that might mean to one person. <coughs> so this is uh, just a couple of slides of um, work I did with Year 8 on this, about when is it okay to use the word gay. Um, and some other words maybe that we should use instead. And just to finish, I just want to show you this uh, website, which is called nohomophobes.com. Anybody can go on it. Um, it's it logs so this I don't I don't think the time's on this is sometime about possibly half past nine ten o'clock last night I took this screenshot so what this does it re it resets every night and it just clocks on the social networking across the world how many times uh, words like faggot is so gay dyke is used uh, and it's challenging the fact that we use this as normal language and actually should we thank you.